All right, we're going to tie a fly uh, that I've been fishing for the past couple years, but it's it's called the the Ninja Pupa. It's a pattern that's in Rainey's catalog now, um, but it's it's a pretty basic tie um, that maybe looks a little bit more complicated. But uh, to start out, I have a Mustad C49S. This is a size 14, and then I have a 2.3 millimeter copper bead on it. Uh, if you like a darker bead, that works as well, or you know any color you like. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start out by putting some wire on the hook. This is uh, 015 wire. Most of the time, when I'm putting wire on the hook, I'm putting on it. I'm putting it on to, to seat the bead. But this time, I'm I'm using the wire to build up the back of the fly. The caddis pupa have really fat back ends, and then the the base that I'm going to start with is white thread. So I have uh, UTC 70 in white, and I'm just going to start right in front of the lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to take the, the lead, and I'm going to go over the top of it, uh, go all the way back, and kind of lock it in place. You're going to make a rib uh, through this fly, and you'll see the reason why in just a second. But uh, any type of thicker material will work, like I, I use UTC... Uh, not UTC, I use Uni 6 Ot white thread every once in a while. Um, what I'm going to actually use is, is Uni Stretch, and I'm going to twist it up. So I'm going to tie that in here, and just kind of bring it back. And I'm also going to bring kind of a, a piece of flash up over the top of the body of the fly. And so I'm going to use some... Uh, UTC medium holographic tinsel in chartreuse. So I bring that down right about here. Now the reason I use UTC 70 is because I can untwist it and, and make sure that it wraps down really flat. So I'm going to untwist this and I'm going to build up the body of this fly. So that's about where I want to be. Um, I'm going to take this holographic tinsel now and just bring it right up over the top and tie that in. And now if you're using this UTC um, Uni Stretch, what you're going to do is you're going to take it and twist it up so that it creates kind of one really thick twisted up section. Okay, the trick here with this uni stretch is is I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it forward, but because I have a big bump right here, it's it's not gonna want to stay on that. It's gonna want to kind of slide back down. All right, I'm just gonna take some super glue and lightly tag the top of the fly, and that way when that wrap when that ribbing hits it, it will stick to it. We're hoping anyway. And you really want to keep this tight. It'll want to come undone on you. Now, the color of this fly is going to come from markers. And then over the top of the body, I'm going to tag it with some hydro, some clear cure goo hydro. Um, and the reason I, I put the, the thicker material is because the, the uni stretch is going to kind of absorb the marker a little bit more than the other thread, making it kind of a... Uh, darker profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Sharpie, I think it's a chartreuse colored Sharpie, and I'm going to color the the bottom of the, the fly with that. And it will bleed up. Um, you can kind of see that the rib is taking a little bit more of the color. Um, now I'm going to kind of hit the rest of the fly with an olive sharpie so it just kind of the belly looks a little bit greenish just a little bit of a tinge of green and then over the top just a tiny bit of black you just kind of dab the black on it a little bit so that's that's the color profile that I'm looking for on this one uh, there are other times where I'll use like the the amber colored uh, he was kind of amber and even some orange. It kind of looks cool. So at this point I'm going to take Hydro and I'm going to put a real light coating on it. And the Hydro will actually help the colors 
um, blend together. So now you can see how that looks. Um, tag it with the light. Looks like I got some scraggly fibers in there. That's all right. We'll just leave them in there. Okay, I'm going to add some little wing pads now onto this. Uh, you probably not the most necessary step to this fly, but you know, it makes it look cool. It probably shows up underwater a little bit better than it does on the vise. But I'm just going to take a piece of medallion sheeting about that that wide. This is the dark dun color. I'm going to twist it so I have a tie-in point, and I'm just going to tie in a piece like that. That's on the far side of the hook. And then I'm going to fold this piece over and tie that piece in now. And now to, to trim those, I'm just going to kind of grab them both and pull them up and trim them off at an angle. So they'll kind of ride down the side of the, the hook. I mean, it, you can see right through to that body through those wing pads. Um, at this point, I'm going to add some little antenna. Some people put the antenna over the top of the fly. I don't think it necessarily matters as long as it shows out the back. And so I'm going to take some lemon wood duck. Curtis turned me on to this stuff. It's actually really clean, great tying materials. So I'm going to grab six or seven of these, just tie them in so they, they, they go quite a bit past the body. You'll see the proportion here. So they're going to kind of hang out like that. And it's okay if they get all squirrely like that and go all over because once they hit the water they're going to taper right down. So trim that off. Now, in my mind this is the most critical part of the flies, the, the head or the collar. And uh, you know some people will use ostrich and uh, I've really been on a, a kick of using the Arizona Synthetic dubbing so I, I use Arizona Synthetic for this. Before I do this, in case anything shows through, I'm going to just tag this with a marker real quick. And you know, you can use white thread for almost any fly if you got markers. You can turn it any color you want. So anyway, I'm just going to make a, a really small dubbing loop. And uh, I'm going to make it really small, really sparse out of this Arizona synthetic dubbing. And my fingers are looking nasty because I had to play mechanic last night. So I'm just gonna build this dubbing loop and try to take care to make sure the fibers are are nice and organized in this loop. It'll make for a better head. So that's about as, as big as it is. It's only about you know inch and a half long. So I'll spin that up. So I've got my dubbing loop and I'll just use the rotary feature to wrap that onto the fly. So three or four turns I'm going to tie it off. Go in there and trim it. Now, before I whip finish, I'm going to take the marker again and I'm going to color the thread down about two or three inches. And now I'm going to whip finish. Right by the bead. And just one final step, I'm going to brush it out. You can use a Velcro or you can use a kind of a wire dubbing tool like this. And I'm just going to preen all those fibers to the back. So, you know, the caddis in your rivers are going to change so much. You know, they, they vary by region as to how they behave and what colors they are. So go check out some samples. Uh, change up the colors on this as much as you want. 
Uh, by the way, the, the dubbing on this is hair's ear colored synthetic dub. But anyway, that's the Ninja Pupa. Fish it, have fun.